How's it going? Um, this is a kind of a different body of work than like what I usually have been working on. Lots of the stuff that I've done before, are, like large scale paintings, um, murals, canvases, kind of like immersive environments. And this is something that I've been working on to the side of all that. They started out as like a bunch of little tiny drawings of like houses on clouds, kind of, um, or not kind of, but like an illustration of the idea that people are always building things on foundations that are constantly shifting, like whether they're like actual buildings or whether there are relationships, like things are always changing for us and we're kind of trying to build things that are permanent and feel normal on top of those things. So the houses are on like these rolling clouds and they're falling apart and they're coming back together in like different areas. And then I started um, kind of piecing these things together, like thinking, well, it would be kind of interesting to actually try to build, build these guys. So. This is like a body of work that spans from, I think like 2013 until the present is like how long I've been working on like these pieces like outside of doing like something differently. So it's nice to see these guys all together and kind of like, you know, how they converse with each other like in like a space as opposed to just seeing like one at a time as I'm working on it. Almost all the materials in the houses and like the cottages I built are from like old paintings. It's so, like one thing that happens when you go into like uh, like a heavy studio practice is you get like a lot of throwaway pieces. You wind up having like a lot of work. So either you need to use like a big storage space or sell a lot of work or you can chop it up and make like new stuff with it, which is what I decided to do with it because I've been creating artwork like seriously probably since like the early 2000s so it's like you know like probably like 20 years where i've got like some stuff that's like real stinkers and some other things that came out like really nice and the stuff i always keep everything like i think like once you start working in like an art type thing there's always things that pop up where oh i could use that or i could use this in the future or this is something that kind of like winds up like influencing like the way that like i'm thinking or this kind of reflects or Maybe I could use this in something at some point, but you get like this huge like pile of stuff. So I wound up like wading through like the piles of stuff and just like things that I had around the house and started putting things together that kind of reminded me of um, stuff. stuff. Yeah, no, like seriously, yeah. It's, it's like stuff in houses though, like architecture and like old houses. Cause like I grew up in an old house and I spend like a lot of time in like older houses and. Once you chip away the plaster, there's all like the lathe work behind it and there's all like uh, like empty spaces in between walls. And I thought that that was, um, that was really interesting to use those materials, but then also kind of combine them with like uh, with uh, painting, painted panels and things. So that's kind of how they started. Uh, the first one that I did was that one. I did that one, it's called Lifted. It was from, um, my first year show at the University of Buffalo, I kind of had a hard time there. Like I wanted to do like a lot of like paintings, but I kind of went in a different direction and not exactly working how I thought I was going to. So I made a piece out of, it's pretty much like studs. And then uh, I used painting panels for lathe work. I did uh, some old panels that I was painting on like a drywall, I reversed them. So every surface of this has like a painting on it, except for like the actual studs, but like the, the mock lathe work in the back is all painted. On the inside, there's like different panels. And that's what I like about these two is that instead of just having one surface, you wind up walking around and looking at it in like different ways. And there's always kind of like an interesting, interesting angle to it. Uh, before I started going into painting, I did a lot of other like tradesy type work where I was doing um, house painting and also like a lot of like drywalling. And it's nice to kind of have those things come together in a more creative practice. So I'm actually making like objects. And I see these, all of these works really kind of as like prototypes and jumped off moving towards like a larger project where in like 10 years, I'd like to build my own house or my own like series of like smaller houses kind of along like these ideas. One thing I think is cool is the idea of architecture behaving organically. Like with all my drawings, there's always like a big organic influence where things are kind of starting in one point and then just expanding and like working outwards. And I mean, I, I've been drawing more than I've been building stuff like this. So this stuff still to me feels kind of clunky. I think there's some things that work in it and there's other things where it's like, oh, I probably wouldn't try that, try that again. Um, but it's good to get it out there. 
but I'd like to get to the point where what I'm building winds up looking like what I'm drawing, where it's like really like light, tiny details and things just kind of naturally like coming together as opposed to being like, this is like a rectangle square and there's like a roof on top of it. It's pretty easy to see as a house. So it's, a, it's not even like a midpoint, but it's getting me closer to like a, what I see kind of coming up on the horizon. So that's the, the oh, an architecture, the an architecturists, I guess, were a group in like the 1970s, 1970, early 1970s to mid 1970s. And they kind of saw architecture is a, the physical embodiment of all the excess of the capitalist system. Um, there's a guy named Gordon Matta Clark who went to school at Cornell for architecture, moved down to New York City, and his cousin wound up dying in a, an apartment building because they'd removed like all the support walls in the basement. And like while he was on the phone with them, the building collapsed. And that had like a huge impact on him. And what he was doing, what he did after that was he would go into buildings like as they were being demolished and he would cut out sections of wall or sections of floor with like welding torches or like saws and he would like pop those up in galleries and display them. So I didn't know anything about that until I looked up, the, I, somehow the term hand architecture came to me when I was like searching things. And uh, from that, I wound up looking at his work, which I thought was like really interesting. And then uh, it kind of went, I mean, that's kind of what he's doing. He's taking a piece like out of a, a, a wall and like displaying it in a gallery. And I was like, oh, it's kind of neat the way that you wind up working in similar directions to somebody if you don't, even if you don't know them, you know? So. Questions? Like that's my, that's my general spiel. Like, and I kind of like throw a lot of things out there, but I like to have these things be more like open conversations. So if there's a, yes. Oh yeah, the drawings. So these are kind of, uh, this is like what I'm talking about, things kind of architectural things behaving like organically. Like if you get closer, they're all just kind of like composed of little like panels. And you get the sense that these things are kind of like being either pulled apart from like one direction to like the other or coming together. But I, I, when I'm, when I'm drawing these things, what I like about these drawings is it's a lot different than like painting. Painting for me is something that happens like really quickly over a long period of time. Like you sit there and you look at it for a little bit and then you jump up and you start painting and you'll paint for maybe like 15, 20 minutes and then you sit back down and you stare at it again for a while. And drawing is something that's like a lot more, for me at least, it's something that's like a lot more meditative where I can just like get going and set like a goal or a timer and just like work for however much time from like left side to like right side. I would have started like over here somewhere and then just add like more and more details. But they're all like pieces of like wood, like there's like two by fours, there's like panel walls, there's little pieces of like brick. And it's the idea of like a house like being like taken apart and like how it would like exist in space. And so I go from like that where it's just black to the, the brown ink and that one too. All the papers found too, like it's all like newsprint that I did like a bunch of sketches on before. And then I wound up like gessoing, but it's just like straight, like um, kind of like freestyle ink, but it's a little bit more controlled than, uh, than like a painting where lots of times like the mediums wind up happening and this is something different. So it's the idea of like things um, behaving organically, like architectural things behaving organically. So. Yeah. 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 Do you have an of how it's, is it close to the drawing or it's more? I'd like it to be more like the drawings. Yeah, absolutely. And the problem though is that it's like, there's part of me that wants it to be more like drawings, but I realize that that's like kind of impossible to live in. Cause like at some level I want it to be like functional where you could actually like inhabit the house. But on the other hand, I think it would be really cool to see like how far you can wind up pushing these materials to see like if you can get something that looks like it's in a state of like falling apart or like coming back together or growing like as you're like looking at it. Cause that's something that I think is like fascinating from like every single angle. Like right now I work for like a construction company Lots of the stuff that we wind up doing is just like going through and demoing things, but I can like sit there and just take pictures of like demo piles just because you've got like different materials and how they naturally wind up like stacking together, which creates like these really like interesting compositions. And what's even more interesting about it is they only exist for like a little bit, you know, and then they go into a dumpster, they get trashed and they wind up going like somewhere else. But yeah, so I guess 
it would be two things, right? Where I want them to look like more like solid like this, but I also want to do something that looks more like that, where people would be kind of, uh, you know, not not exactly living at it, but like strictly for for viewing. But I kind of see that as a, I don't know. I think now it's important to make things that you can use. You know, like I think you have to do something more than make something that just looks like interesting. You know, like, and I think that making something where you're reusing like a bunch of different materials, either if it's like scrap or you know existing existing like building materials that would be a good direction to go as opposed to like well i'm gonna start out with like all these like new things and just build something for people to walk around yeah the other thing too is like sculptural stuff is incredibly expensive like i just did like paintings and i'm like oh i gotta spend like 200 dollars for a bunch of paints and like a canvas and i was talking to a guy that does like sculptures and he's talking about doing like metal pourings and he's like oh ten thousand to like twenty thousand dollars like just for like materials i'm like that's insane like i can't I'm like i thought 200 was a lot for like a painting so it's like a different a different league from like the way that i'm that i'm used to like working but oh, this time I talk to you. Yeah. Um, I was an undergrad in Rockport. You were doing the paintings uh -huh. over at, at the college. Um, you like to work really big at the time when you talk about, you know, costs, store, and everything. So you talk to these guys a little bit of how that affects how you show. And especially now with the pandemic, yeah. do you find that you can't do smaller things to get into these galleries now that we're trying to go back to a normal? Or can you still, are you still free to do your work at the scale that you want? Yeah, um, doing work at the scale that I want would be something that's kind of like more personal. Like at this point, like it's something that like I actually like want to. D yeah, there's, that's that's good. And there's like a lot of different directions that I can go with it. Like because like I for a while I was like, ooh, murals. Like murals are the way that you should be going because they exist in like a public space. And besides just being a painting that's like on like a white wall in like a, a gallery space, you're like, it's in an environment. And so like as you go to the spot, you're gonna be like seeing people or hearing different sounds or smells that you don't wind up witnessing in like a gallery space you know and so i was like yes murals is like the way to go and then like i think like the heyday of like murals that were functioning like that was probably like early 2000s to maybe like 2010 and then afterwards everybody realized it, it's like anything that's like kind of cool like any type of like youth culture or like subculture type thing that winds up getting appropriated eventually and then it's just like people just want the same thing over and over and over again on like the side of a building and there's no room for like experimentation anymore unless you're like in the middle of nowhere just like playing around with paints on like the side of a barn or something you know so like you have like a limited space where you can work the way that like I'd like to work and like lots of things I think it's in incredibly competitive to get things on a larger scale in like a public space now than it was probably like five or six or even like ten years ago like you know because like now people want something different you know like they expect something different or it's like um, not real developers that wind up like having like a an artist or something like come in and do that so I don't know if that really answers anything about like the pandemic but it's definitely like changed the way that like I wind up like thinking about like whether or not I want to create something like really large or something like smaller and like intimate you know like so I, I think that I do think about those things I haven't been working as large as I was before like back like when I when I'd given that talk like at that point I think I was doing a lot of like four foot by eight foot like rolled canvas and I was talking about like rolling it up to, like so you can maximize like storage space but uh the stuff that I've been doing recently has been like I don't know like maxing out at like 48 by like 48 inches which is still like a decent size but it's nothing like it was was before and maybe that's just me getting jaded you know like maybe that's just me like being like well I mean what's the sense in having something this big if it's just going to wind up like going into like storage like I still like really enjoy it and there's like a huge freedom when you're working that large and like anything that you wind up throwing at it is going to be incorporated somehow like uh with like paintings and even like with like these types of like studies I think that there's a a lot of uh they're almost like um like diuretic or like journals where everything that you're thinking winds up going onto the surface like while you're working on it and so there's things that exist in it that are totally buried that you don't see in the end but because they're there that's what influenced the way the piece developed 
And that's why I think it's interesting working with like these types of materials because I mean like some of them used to be like the backs of stretchers. There's a, and here there's like other ones that were like drawing boards. These panels, my mom used to have like a store in, uh, in Spencerport for a little bit. And these were like the, like when you walk in the little countertop. So I like kind of like took like all the panels off the countertop and used that. All the blue is from my BFA show at Brockport where I just kind of like cut, I've, I had like, I did um, a bunch of like masonite panels that were like a skin, like the whole way around the wall. And then afterwards I had probably like, I don't know, somewhere between like 20 to 30 four by eight foot masonite panels that I wound up like cutting up and using in different projects. And I kind of came at the idea that it looks like siding, you know? So like, why not like cut it up into like real thin strips and make it like siding on like the side of a house. But there's like, I can see like certain points of this and like, oh yeah, that was the ink that was on like this wall or this is kind of like what I was thinking about when I was doing that. So there's like this sense of uh, almost like it being like a person where, where there's uh, like different layers that might not be apparent in like the final iteration of the piece, but uh, they're all in there and they all wind up contributing to what it, what it turns into. Yeah, yeah, there is a yeah, push light. Have you thought about it? Like, what were, what were you thinking about putting the light in it? But then on the flip side, like, have you thought about doing more? Yeah. Maybe even more like a house. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I have, so at first I was like, I thought it would be kind of cool to have it illuminated from within because there's like pieces of like paintings that like I kind of enjoyed in here. And I wanted people to be like, oh, when you look at it, you can see like at least like three or four different paintings if you look like through the window. So I wanted a way to like have those illuminated. And everything, lots of times, like when I'm like displaying stuff, winds up being like a jump off. And like I look at it once it's up there, and I'm kind of like throwing it at a wall and seeing like what winds up like sticking. And I like the idea of lighting, and I like the idea of illumination, and I would do it entirely different than I did it like this time around because this was just like a battery like push thing. Um, but yeah, I mean that's part of the reason also like besides just like making money that I got involved in like a construction company is because I want to know like how to be able to like do these things legitly. And like putting these houses together, I realized I had like, I had like no idea as to like what goes into actually like building a house. So I'm like, what's a better way to actually like, uh, you know, figure out how these things are actually put together correctly than, you know, being involved with it a lot. But yeah, I've thought about doing like more lighting and one of, like one of the things, so I'm like thinking 10 years, buy like a little piece of property, make like something that's kind of like a communal house with like a kitchen, a living space, maybe like two bedrooms, and then have like a series of like little cottages that also function as like um, bedrooms. So instead of a house that goes like up, it just winds up taking out like a lot of space. So it's kind of like a little like compound. But then for each one of those, trying to figure out how can I make you know, like, what am I going to use, like, solar power? And then, like, how do I wind up, like, like keeping these things lit? How do I keep them, like, heated? What do I do in terms of, like, plumbing? Like, if it's in, like, the middle of the southern tier somewhere and there's no, like, water lines? Like, you know, so there's all these problems that kind of, like, I'm thinking about, like, now, which hopefully I'll have figured out in, like, a decade or so. But, but we'll see what happens. But, yeah, I like these. Whenever I look at any kind of work that I wind up doing, I look at, like, all the parts where I think it kind of falls short. So I wind up coming away from, like, these guys and thinking how I can make them better. So I would do, like, a different lighting system for this. Or if I was to go, like, larger, I would definitely do, like, some type of illumination inside. I would probably put doors on them because doors are kind of important. And, uh, yeah. And I want them to look more organic instead of just like cube-like, yeah, so. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's my spiel. How about this one, Dave? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, so it's, it's called like an Eastlake core sample, and like the Eastlake company is one of the first companies to use like machining, like a, uh, lathe mills to like make like really detailed pieces of wood that they were putting on houses towards the end of like the 1800s really like 1900s so you could get like a lot of like really fancy details for like less 
less money than if you had some guy like chiseling away at like the wood and everything and making it beautiful. So that's where I came up with the name Eastlake. And then Eastlake core sample is the idea of like, a, if you take like a diamond drill and you just drill into a rock, you're stuck with like this like sample of like core that's like this big and like probably like that around. And you can just see like layers of like sediment in it. So I was thinking like, what if you took like a, like a, a drill and you just like drilled like into a house and you compacted all this stuff into like this layers of like kind of like architectural sediment. So some of that are like actual pieces from like scrap from projects that I've done like around the house. The frame for it is actually like the back of a, a larger painting that I cut and then like spliced together to contain everything. And um, there's also like little pieces of like, uh, like panels that like I've cut up. I really like taking those masonite panels and cutting them up into like smaller pieces a whole lot. There's something that's really satisfying about that. Thank you. Were you gonna say something? What's that? Oh, you like that one? Thank you. Yeah, that one. Um, all these things take a lot of time too, and like that was something that was kind of frustrating and surprising for me. Where I'm like, like I'm hot glue. I'm trying to figure out: do I want to do something where I'm like putting these things together quickly, or do I want to have like the more you know, so instead of using like hot glue, you sit there and you use like like regular glue or even like Mod Podge or something to keep like the little pieces of paper on the wood afterwards. And sometimes I just get frustrated and like I never wind up going back to a piece and finishing it the way that I started out with it up here. So it's nice to have kind of like a loose vision as to where you want to go. And then, um, you know, just kind of let it like develop and sometimes the piece is finished before. But yeah, I like the way that the, the scaffolding kind of like looks from like different sides. Yeah. Yeah. Why are you doing from here? These little guys? Yeah. Because um, uh, some of the houses were like, besides just doing houses, they're kind of like getting like pulled apart. Like I would do like clusters of houses really close together. And so that was kind of an idea where. I was going to build like probably like I was like, oh, it'd be cool to start with like three and then do like, you know, like 12 and then like 15 and then like 17 like clusters of these little houses kind of building on like scaffolds like that. So a lot of these things are happening kind of at the same time. And you can see like there's like little platforms on it where I probably would have built houses off it if I hadn't gotten frustrated by it. But yeah, that one's like kind of like tighter and like more complete than like everything else. Like those three houses on that pedestal right there came before I worked on like that. And then from that piece, I jumped into like this piece and like the longer piece like over there. But again, it's just like, they're, they're all kind of like questions, you know, like they're all kind of like, well, what would it look like if I did it with like these materials? Or as I'm trying to like work it out with like smaller materials, like how would that look if I worked even like larger like afterwards? So they're all kind of just like little, little experiments, yeah. Thank you. With the larger uh, scale structures like that one and like the ones in front, um, the decision to use different uh, sized pieces of wood slab and, and different colors, uh, the more I stare at it now, I can see the different layers, but when I was first looking at it, it was kind of like an optical illusion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I like I like that idea of playing with space like a whole lot, and like that was something that like I liked like um, working with like murals um, is the idea of like kind of like taking a space and like rearranging it. So if it's a flat space, all of a sudden making it look like kind of like three dimensional and figuring out different ways that you can push things forward and like pull things back. It makes for like a really interesting surface, and it's also the type of thing where if you can't figure it out right away, like you know like the hope is that somebody's going to wind up spending more time to like figure out what is in front of like what or like what actually went into like putting it together. None of this stuff comes together like arbitrarily. Like lots of times there's things that I wind up, maybe the materials, like that started out as like a palette and then I did, um, broke the palette up and I used like a, a bunch of like little scraps from that to build a bunch of it. And uh, then like the, the painted panels, but it's, it doesn't happen in like even like a couple hours. So I get like a lot of time when it's like half finished where I can like look around and see like what parts of it I'd like to bring out more and what parts I'd like to 
like to push to the back. Like that's almost kind of like a little like a elevated like barn type thing is kind of what it reminds me of because you got like a little window where you could see like a horse or something like sticking its head out of and then like on the inside like it's I don't know, it reminds me of like a lot of barns that like I've hung out in when I was younger so Cool. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for thanks for coming by.